I admit, the decision we impose extra body on the masses of our people. I feel your pain. This is one decision we must be able to save our country from going under and take our resources away from the stranglehold of a few unpatriotic elements. Painfully, I have asked you, my compatriots, to sacrifice a little more for the survival of our country, for your trust and belief in us, I assure you that your sacrifice shall not be in vain. The government I lead will repay you through massive investment in transportation, infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, and other public utilities that will improve the quality of lives. The democracy MK Abiola died for is one that promotes the welfare of the people over personal interests of the ruling class and one where the governed can find personal fulfillment and happiness. That is the hope MK Abiola ignited throughout our country in 1993. On this year's Democracy Day, I enjoy all, all of us, to rededicate ourselves to strengthening this form of government of free people that has been our guiding light these past 24 years. In particular, those of us who have been privileged to elect into public office at various levels in both the executive and legislative. All right. Thanks for staying with us. Now, in Democracy Day speech, as we see, the president implored the citizens to sacrifice a little more and promised that the government will repay them through massive investments in transportation, infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, and other public utilities. Hours ago, we got news, of course, that the, the student loan bill that was signed into law by the president, um, this bill that would enable student access and um, um, interest-free loans, right? Um, especially it's supposed to um, it's supposed to help students access interest-free loans. Now, life in Nigeria has been known to be about survival for the common man whose life is strongly shaped by many challenges and with the unavoidable subsidy removal, things have gotten even worse, especially for the everyday Nigerians. So today we're asking, do Nigerians really have to suffer <laughs> for this survival of Nigeria? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the one 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow after one with the hashtag Wayshow. Okay, oh, this matter is a serious matter. <laughs> um, let me point out, of course, what he said, our president. Uh, first of all, he says there's a chokehold. Mm. That some people have held Nigeria like this, you know. Every time I hear um, people in authority say this, I keep wondering, right, how exactly, how difficult is it for you to un unchoke yourself, you know, as a country? Then we remember when President Goodluck Jonathan was complaining about the cabals, the cabals right? And I mean, every, I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think Buhari ever said anything around cabals or anything. Uh, but Aisha Buhari said. She said it, but I think it was really, well, she had said they, they, were, they, had, they had hijacked the government, yeah. right? So every time I hear this, I keep wondering, okay. So let me, let me explain how best I think that probably these people are not seeing. I am a citizen. I have a father. No, sorry, I have a son. I have a life, right? 
And I keep telling my son every day, there's no money in this house. There's no money in this house. We have to manage. We have to do this. You have to suffer. You can't go to quality school. You can't get good health care. You cannot eat good meals and all of that because we have to manage. We have to manage. And every single day, mm. my son sees me going out to go and drink a zoo in the club. He goes out to go and take an SC. Mm. I'm going for parties. I'm doing all sorts of things, right? What do you expect would go on in the mind of my child? Is it that mommy is just really irresponsible or mommy truly does not have? Do you understand? Mm. Because that's, I mean, that's the only explanation I think I can give whenever I hear these things around suffering. Nigerians have no problem suffering. We don't have any problem sacrificing. I won't call it suffer. I'll call it sacrifice. We don't have any problem sacrificing for the greater good of mm. Nigeria. Mm. What we have a problem with is that when we are making those sacrifices, it seems to us that the people that are supposed to be preserving and like um, protecting our resources kind of like mismanage those resources. And we don't see that prudency, you understand? We don't see that transparency and that honesty in managing of the resources of Nigerians. Mm. So that's why whenever any leader comes up to say, you know what, let us sacrifice and all of that, it is very difficult. So everybody then has this, let me have my own share of the national cake now mentality. That's the best way I can explain it. I don't know. Mm. You want to help me out? Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's more like when the leadership talks about sacrifice. I mean, like you rightly said, Nigerians have no problems sacrificing. I mean, everybody understands. If it's for the greater good, I would sacrifice. But when the leadership is not sacrificing, so you would expect that if the president or the leadership says that, okay, you know what? We have to sacrifice because, you know, we have an agenda. There is no money. There is blah, 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 blah. You would expect that, okay, the people in leadership should show by example First of all, say, okay, you know what? For the next couple of years, we're going to take a pay cut. For the next couple of years, we're going to do X, Y, Z. We're probably going to travel by X. You know, again, I mean, this, this comes to even private sector. When they're trying to cut costs, you have to manage your overhead. You, you cannot but reduce your overhead. And then you tell your cleaner who takes some 15000 to sacrifice 10000 and then go home with 5000 Meanwhile, you are still flying your first class. It, I mean, it's just totally unfair. And I think that's what the government is doing. If you're going to be buying, I mean, they just, this is a new um, National Assembly. Before our very eyes, we're going to see the cars they will drive. We're going to see their ah, allowances. Your lad, don't go no, 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 but you see, that's the truth. What, all these things in terms of fuel subsidy and all that, they probably do not even it don't care. Exactly. They won't bear the brunt of it. They don't pay for fuel. They don't. Mm, hold that thought. Let's go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, I want to hear Norma's thought. Ah, do you, you, want to, you want to break my table? Kilo this table day. must break. Come down, come down. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're having a conversation around the sacrifices that Nigerians have to make. Mm. We're asking, do we have to suffer, right, for Nigeria's survival, right? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa World and hashtag Wayshow. Now, Diola was about to break my table, but let me go to Noma first, then I'll come back to you, Diola. <laughs> Noma, your thoughts quickly. All right, so uh, I'll just uh, piggyback off what you and uh, Jola had said initially when I, when I saw the topic of conversation this evening about Nigerians having to suffer uh, for survival. Uh, the, the word that came to mind is exemplary leadership. And uh, Jola had mentioned it when she said leaders are not showing example in the way that they're behaving. I mean, a new administration has come in, and at the beginning of any administration, people are looking for uh, uh, opportunities for hope, for some kind of uh, encouragement, some kind of um, 
direction that will will take away some of the pain that they have um, that they have suffered over time and um, beginning your administration with words like you know I mean the speech and the way it was presented uh, and then trying to pick up the pieces now with further speeches about oh Nigerians needing to suffer a little uh, for the survival of the nation. I, I think, uh, in my opinion, that that was pro um, was mismanaged because when you are a leader, part of the skills that you must pick up very quickly is excellent communication. So being able to communicate what you mean or say what you mean and mean what you say, it, it's very important. And when people receive information, they're going to interpret it based on what they believe that you are trying to communicate. So being, you, you have to be very careful in being able to do that. And you start telling people that they have to suffer for the survival of a nation as if it is, uh, it almost borders on trivializing what they have been through to up until now. Mm. And because I we have been suffering. <laughs> Absolutely. With Nigerians That's the only thing we know, actually. Suffering. Now. Suffering and, and smiling. Yeah. And then you are further reminding them that, oh, keep suffering. In fact, the suffering is even going to be more. I don't believe that that was the best way to pass the message that you wanted to. It's important that people know that for there to be progress, there has to be some level mm -hmm. of sacrifice that you have mentioned. But how you, you, you craft it is by way of vision. When you show people where you are going, Thank you, I want to Mama. make that part of the slogan that the... Um, that their administration, part of one of the slogans, if I remember correctly, is that a leader knows the way, shows the way, goes the way, right? So in that first instance, you want to quickly activate some of those things that you have, some of those, I don't want to call them promises, but some of those goals that you had begun to, to, to sell to the people. And then you begin to craft that, and then you begin to activate it immediately. Mm. So when people are seeing you say something, and it seems that you're doing something else, the leaders are not showing any form of example because nothing has changed by way of telling categorically, these are the things that were starting from myself or starting from my administration, starting from my cabinet. These are the things that were activating immediately to show that we feel the pulse of the people mm -hmm. and that we are ready to do what it needs to do or that to show that example to Nigerians and they too can know that, oh, they're not in this struggle for themselves alone or uh, by themselves alone, that they have a government that is mindful by word and by deed, the poor, the the, 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 you, the feelings and the the ex experiences of the the average person, then it can begin to make sense. Absolutely. But I do not believe at all that this uh, message has driven any point home so far. I'm 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 so I'm so loving the conversation, and I will reemphasize that you see when people talk. Mm. government should not always feel like it's everybody that loves to criticize. And I love what you said. You just hit the nail on the head because whilst Jola was talking, I scribbled down plan and I put it in asterisks. Now, let me explain how these things work. When I tell my son, sorry, you cannot go to a, a school that is expensive. You cannot get good health care. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. I will say to him, you know how mommy goes to the club every day? Mm. I have cut that out anymore. Straight we are not going to. You know how we eat out every day? We won't do that. For we will not yeah. eat out for three months. Exactly. You understand? Exactly. You know how we go to go and buy ice cream and popcorn for, ev for you every week, mm -hmm. every day in the week? Mm -hmm. And we cut that down to two times in a week. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Do you know how we do this? I say, okay, you know what? We have shawarma bread in the house. We have the, this. We have, so we'll start making our shawarma in the house. Mm. We will not go and buy it outside. We will make it within the house and make sure that, okay, yes, it is homemade and we are patronizing ourselves. Mm. Now, 
When a leader comes with that kind of structure, yeah. everybody will file behind you. Yeah. Because you, you see, that statement was fantastic. What you should have just finished it with was that starting from my administration, like normally, as in like I said normally, normal just rightly put it. Yeah. Starting from my administration, we are not going to do X, Y, Z. Do you understand? Because this is what has been happening previous government. Mm -hmm. But you see those previous government, they had some money to play around with. We don't have a dime to play around with. Mm. You understand? Then you now say, this is what we're going to be doing as a leader. This is what we're going to be doing. When you start that, there is nobody that is insane. Yeah. Now you not tell Nigerians to make sacrifices, to suffer, to do this. We're already suffering, but we will we, we'll be glad to even suffer the more because we now know that there's a direction. Mm. So let's not, let's move away from blanket statements. So even giving examples of cars, I was even going to say that we need to address this conversation. Because some state governors, I think it was Autumn I saw that, they mm. said all the cars, nothing, I mean, a governor is leaving office and he takes away everything. Yeah. How do we stop those kind of things? Do you understand? No, even some state governors, that we know that there is a car manufacturing company in Nigeria. Mm. Right? Yesterday, or was it two days ago, I saw a guy in Oyo State, I believe. If I, I posted on, on Instagram, if they could tag me. I want to go and see that car. It's, it's a truck. Mm. It has a solar panel on the top. These are Nigerian brands. Regardless of whether they have all the finesse or the aesthetics and all of that, a government that is serious to me will say, okay, you know what? We have made in Nigerian cars. And we're going to invest in we're them. We're going to invest yeah. in them. There yeah. was a time where all our heads of state drove only push your cars. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you really want us to say you want, I mean, you really want us to, to suffer, like you put it, or you want us to make sacrifices, let that sacrifice, let's see an example of that's what a sacrifice looks like. From the government, we can't do business as usual. Mm. Now, I would commend this president. Because I hear that not only this law has been signed, the one around electricity, which yes. gives capacity for different companies, as yeah. long as you have the funding, yeah. you can create electricity, which will solve a major problem in this yeah. country, yeah. Yeah. has been signed. Mm. But we know, again, Nigerians, every leader, every leader should understand that Nigerians are coming from a very, very edgy point. Mm. We're already edgy. We are not used to trusting our government, right? So everybody is apprehensive. Everybody does not know. They are uncertain what is going to happen. Well, you see, that law that has been signed, it will change the face of electricity in Nigeria. Mm. It will change a lot of things. Do you understand? So all these things that we're talking about, that businesses are suffering, you understand? All that music might become history mm. if it is well implemented. Which then brings me to my final point, and I'll come back to you, Diola. It is not the shortage of good policies or great policies on paper that we lack. I mean, if you want to give it to Wari's administration, they, they had fantastic policies mm -hmm. on yeah. paper. Yeah. Do you understand? Whatever happened to the implementation? Always the problem. Let me continue. Here. <laughs> so, you see, I, I, I mean, from your last statement, there's always policy. It's fine. It's all fine words. But the implementation of it. I, I am very disturbed. Okay, yes, I mean... For subsidies, some people don't agree that it had to go. I mean, okay, I mean, that's, that's on one part. Now we talk about suffering. Yeah, you say you're going to compensate with um, education, with healthcare, and all that. But you see, the government forgets something. That to even access these infrastructure dividends, you need money. So it comes back to, if I don't have a disposable income, how do I access these infrastructures? So does it look like putting a cart before the horse? Yes, it does. So my first point of call would have been, okay, so from that subsidy, that's income, how do we channel, how do the people have some form of um, respite from it? And really, at the end of the day, it goes back to minimum wage. You must increase minimum wage. <sighs> You cannot let people... I mean, what is 30,000? <laughs> what, what, what is 30,000? Just walk into a supermarket and come out. You know what 30,000 is. One nylon. It, it's, it's not even up to one nylon. Mm. That's the sad thing. So, 
Now, okay, BRT, yes, you've provided transport. There is adequate transport, but I need money to get on the bus. If I don't have that money, how do I enjoy this so-called infrastructure? It's just there. And before you know it, it's just going to be dilapidated because nobody's using it. Mm. If people just feel, okay, you know what? Let me just stay at home because I'm barely surviving. Now you're, you're focusing on the big picture. And like I always say, governments, for, they, they, I, I don't know, there's a disconnect. They feel that um, people are very interested in the very big things. People are really, really, I mean, at the core of it. People are just about basics. I want to eat. I want my kids to eat. I want them to be able to go to school. I want to have a roof over. I mean, let me even shock you. Landlords too have increased um, rents. Yes, no. No. No, man, let me come to you as we wrap up. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's really unfortunate, and um, I really look forward to the time when we would have government that is a, an example true and true where we have people who are who are servants right who have uh, uh, pledged to serve people for what it is and then show example in their actions and nigerians at this point in time are seeking for integrity they are seeking for transparency they're seeking for whatever actions that you are asking them to take, that you are the first person to take the plunge. You are the first person to show by example that this is how you mean what you say by leading with example. It is, um, it is what, I don't know, it, the, the administration is still very fresh. So it, they, they can still, they still have time to go back to their, think tank and readdress or review, reassess their strategy in order to get things done and in order to carry the people along because leadership is about vision. Leadership is about showing the people how things are done. You say that you know the way, then you go the way. You will, you, you will show the way and then you will go the way. And these are the questions that are on the minds of citizens you're telling us to suffer or to yeah to suffer for the survival of nigeria at what cost mm. and is it just nigerians that are to suffer and then the leaders are to enjoy the dividends thereof how yeah, normal, can yeah, normal uh, segregated it are the leaders not Nigerians? No, at this point, it, it almost this, feels like they are not. This, I know. I, I'm trying to point. point. <laughs> at this crazy. point, it's 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 uh, it's open to contest. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. But let's take comments quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I have here. Um, the president's speech is a mockery of the poor Nigerians who INEC declared that voted him into power. Leaders should lead by example by firstly cutting down on what they earn and then arresting their friends who have stolen and embezzled public funds. Secondly, the student loan is another means for embezzling public funds, like the feeding of children by the last administration. I personally believe that Nigeria's state has been, hijacked, has, been, has been captured by the ruling cabals. It is a pity for the country I love so much. My name is Paul from Egbeda. It's so interesting, but mm. I, I want to say to Paul that, you see, I do not subscribe to that idea of arresting people that have stolen money. Mm. You know why I'm saying that? Mm. The truth is that if you, if you really want to arrest, mm. you arrest someone. Even the person arresting, we arrest We are arrest. Do you understand? That's how bad mm. this um, issue of um, um, embezzlement, uh, embezzlement yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. stealing of public funds have gone. They should just negotiate. Do you understand? Please negotiate. Return. <laughs> Oga, you took 10 billion. Just Nico, return return nine. Take one. Take one. Do you understand? That kind of negotiation should be happening because really, if you say you want to go that route of mm. um, what's it called? Um, um, arresting. Problem will just be our hand. And you know this hap that happened during Buhari's um, first term. Mm. The fear of, oh, Buhari being a disciplinarian. Mm. A lot of people were submitting themselves to the authorities yes. to say, okay, you know what? I want to return X okay, amount of money. That, uh, 
It's all right. Norma, you have a comment. Okay, so this one um, says, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Do Nigerians have to suffer for the survival of Nigeria? The answer is yes. Why I say yes is that according to my dear beautiful sister, Norma, she made mention of paying the price before things can be put in place and before we can start enjoying ourselves. But this kind of suffering that we're experiencing now is too harsh and not the kind we wanted. As if they emptied all their venom on us. If things have to be in place, then we need to improve the electricity system, security, education, agriculture, good roads, and all other essential amenities. My dear beautiful sister Diola said we need to improve the minimum wage, if possible, double or triple it, which is key. And I support my name is Daniel Ido, Ways regular fan. Thank you so much, Daniel. I think we'll continue this conversation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And the direction I want to go on the conversation would be what will um, putting the horse before the cat mean to Nigeria? Mm -hmm. In the sense that now we've seen all of these things. Beautiful. Signing the, elec the electricity uh, bill, signing the, what's it called, the student loan bill, fantastic, right? Taking out subsidy, great. They are all good things. But mm. you see, where I want people to understand, I mean, do a survey. There's yeah. something called design thinking, yeah. right? You go and check from the people, what mm. do you want? Mm -hmm. And you then come back, right? That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Don't think you know what I want. So I want Nigerians to be able to tell us what exactly would what exactly would support mean to them, right? What exactly would, would it mean if I say, okay, you know what? I want to sacrifice. What would that sacrifice look like in, in my head? What are my sacrifices? I don't know how we're going to coin that topic, but hey. Yeah. That's, that's the direction I want us to. So almost like a follow-up from this conversation because actually this conversation deserves to go all month round because this is the one we say, make we suffer now. Make we survive. Make we, <laughs> it is well. But thank you so much, Jola and Noma. I think we had a very, very fantastic conversation, if mm. I can say so myself. Um, now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles at WayShowAfrica1. With the hashtag WayShow, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote by the president, Tinumbu, it says, I admit that the decision will impose an extra burden on the masses of our people. This is one decision that we must bear to save our country from going under. And um, we'll see you guys tomorrow, live at 8 p.m., as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>